Uh, guys, the most important thing, setting the boat up on the trailer, before you put it, bring the boat out of the water, before you do that, put the boat in the water, pull the bung out, all sit half forward with the sweep half forward and find a level spot fore and aft in the boat. And you might find might be this thought, see, might be that one, might be that, might be another spot so you can get long ways. Then the other way is sit up the trailer and make sure the boat is horizontal, level, either way. So the pins are vertical before you start anything. And that allows you to do the string line, allows you to do your pitch and everything like that. Make sure the boat's firm before you start work. Uh, just to check the rig of your boat, which is like, imagine a house. Uh, the unfortunate thing of a surf boat, it's got tapering sides. So if you can imagine, put a string line down the middle of your boat, then get a plumb bob boat level, then you get your plumb bob up against that string line, which is right there, and you put that on there. On a, I go onto a straight edge, so it's just touching, and mark it, which I've already done. The mark's there. So that gives us the centre of the boat. Then we measure from the centre of the boat to the centre of the seat, and then from the centre of the seat out to here, and that gives us the inboard. Um, sorry, inboard plus 32, uh, which will give you, and I'll show you right now which way we go. Um, now to determine the inboard the most practical way, you measure the centre of the seat, put a mark here, which we've already done to there, which is the centre of the seat. We then get the plumb bob, with the boat being level both ways, and we drop that down off the oar handle to the centre of the seat. And then we measure from there, to, and that should be around about 32. This is 30, so it needs a little bit more inboard. I'd like to be 32. The most important thing, when you draw through, you come through, in, in the surf it's a little bit more than other forms of rowing. So you need to be out here, not across here. It's important that you can draw past your body. The most important thing that I see in surf boat rowing, crews going to see rowing look like a caterpillar. Uh, the angles of the oars are always out. That means that no one's getting towards the, to the back of the seat in time. So what's most important is you sit your man in the boat. Now Stefan's uh, uh, is 180 tall. Now if all your crew are 180, that's fine. You set about 600 from the back to right there, where that is 600 right now, which is good too. We're about where your belt goes is a pretty good point that I take it from, and most people seem to do that. So that's, <coughs> that's real important, 600. What that means is your whole crew is getting towards the back chocks in time. So, and you, you can never get rhythm if you get to the back chocks at all different times. So it's important that you set yourself off the back chocks. So get your front chocks, the back chocks, so your blades come out in time. So if you have someone two metres tall and someone 170 tall, you've got to then get the average. So still get them to finish at the back chocks, say at 165, say. And so the little bloke can can get length back, they get in the rhythm, and the big bloke goes. And the way to do that is that there's not a must adjustment, these different stuff. So a big guy will sit in the far hole, and a little guy will sit in the closest hole if it's rigged right. We'll show you how to check that in a few minutes. But uh, most important, rhythm, you lack rhythm, timing, this is where you do it. And then you can put 150 roughly and then do it. Um, there's, there is another way, it's too complicated, it's by degrees. Uh, and then that really is the true way of doing it. But I won't go there. Um, if you want to ask me on the beach and I'll show you how. But this is all you need to know. Most people have a rule in their toolbox and this is the simplest way to get that rhythm. And not only that, you have other crews rowing the boat. So you've got to be able to make it usable for everyone. And then we put the oar in the rolly. Stefan will grab that. We measure in 100 mil to, the, to there. Now that's a given point, as long as you do the same every time. It can be 200 mil, but I'm happy for 100. And this blade's not too bad. We put, and that's about 10 mil. Uh, I like between 10 and 12 mil, depending on, 
it's not it's whatever you like but make sure every blade is the same pitch you don't have one more on one on the other because it drives the boat from one side to the other so that's very important a level as if the blades in the water at that angle as if you're drawing it through in the water with the boat level both ways and that's how you do it 100 mil in from the tip and 10 to 12 mil right there and you'll never have a problem you come through to the catch check that which is the same we come through to the finish and do the same okay so that's bang on so that means the pins are vertical it's most important that the rollick pins are vertical um, so if they if the, this arc is varying, it means that the pins are not vertical and then you have to deal with that, pack the Rolex, do whatever. It can be quite difficult at times in the surf boat. If we need to set the pitch, what we do is we use these bending tools. We put that in there, like so. And we put this one here, like so. Get it down as low as you can and bend it hold it against, take the weight off the pin and then bend that up and that bend it so it's bending from there. You don't want to bend this middle here, you've got to keep that dead flat. Um, so that's most important. Then you put the oar back in the rollick and you test. And once we've done that and we've got our 12, 10 degrees, whatever, our millimetres I showed pitch, 100 mil in, with the plumb bob, we put this here and then we, we check that one, that is far too close. So if this boat rolled, the pitch, uh, there's a good chance this oar would break, it can't come out. It needs to come out about here. So what we do, we bring this in here and we find, we turn it half, that's good, but we need to bend this from this point to there. So how we do that, is that we put the bending tools here, like so, and the bending tools up here, and we just open that out, one against the other, and um, just bend that out so that we've got that gap. Um, that's about all we need to do there. Now, if you're rowing with round oars, it's very essential that the round oar a third of the round oar fits in the race. So if it doesn't, you then bend it, then you've got to bend the opposite side again. Okay, that's very important. If you, if you don't follow, have a look on the website and we can, you can show what we do on the website. Thanks guys.